Hello, my name is Stephen Lurson. I love that you're back this week for another uh, video with me. Um, here at Donna Downey Studios blog, we're always trying to come up with new ideas with art. And now I'm really excited about this new idea that I have. So you may already be aware of the idea of paint skins. Um, so I want to really push that. I have this idea of pouring 50 paint skins and then layering them on a canvas and gluing them together with uh, acrylic matte medium or something like that so that the end painting is kind of built as opposed to painted. Um, and then, the, you know, it has a bunch of really thick layers on the front. I might even use a panel instead of canvas. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. This might be a few week process because pouring paint skins might be the first video, then uh, moving them around and constructing them and gluing them down might be a second video. Uh, I know it's going to take a long time to let a whole bunch of paint skins dry. And just in case any of you don't know what paint skins are, it's essentially acrylic paint. Acrylic paint is made out of two things primarily. Acrylic polymer, which is like liquid plastic, and then the pigment. The pigment is a color. Uh, whether that comes from nature or minerals or it's man-made synthetic, that's uh, the two different parts. You could take the same pigment and put it in linseed oil or some sort of oil and suddenly it's oil paint instead of acrylic. Um, so, today's a nice warm day in the summer here in North Carolina, so I, I don't think that it would take very long for the paint to dry. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. I washed it, so I'm going to need that. I need some, some water because you want the paint to be able to flow. I'm going to be using some clear gesso. Might even try some iridescent medium. And then my favorite colors, whatever I feel like using in the moment. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get some clear gesso. Try with this. Pour it into a cup. I've used maybe that much, enough that it will flow. I'm going to try putting some iridescent medium in here. Put a little water to make it liquidy. Then I'm going to use a color. So I have that. I used uh, some anthraquine and blue. I'm just going to kind of swirl that around. Stirring it would be better, but I didn't get a stir stick. I guess a coffee stir stick or paint stir or something like that would be good. You don't usually want to use paint brushes to stir because you could end up ruining some of your brushes if you forget to wash it or something like that. All right, so it seems to be pretty even. Now I'm just going to pour this out on the plastic and let it dry. And eventually, once that dries, then I'll be able to peel it off as a thick piece of plastic. So to, to save room for other pieces, I'm going to pour this in the corner. And I'm going to pour multiples so that I can move them around on the canvas whenever I finish. Now this has some blue in it. That means I'm not going to want to put any uh, orange in there because it'll turn brown, but any other color basically will work. You don't want to mix complementary colors. So let me start again. and I, I can already see the iridescence in these pieces wind is starting to blow. So I'm going to do this again. I'm just going to repeat the process, changing the colors, using lots and lots of mediums, and only a little bit of color, really. I'm not using a whole lot of paint um, because the Golden Brand paints are so rich and dense with color 
that a little goes a long way. Whereas other brands, eh, you may just use straight paint. So I just added some one single, literally one drop of uh, violet purple, and then the iridescent medium clear gesso and a little bit of water. This is actually really fun and I'm going to most likely accelerate it so that for you it'll be a blink of an eye. I use teal and if you notice I'm not washing the cup I'm just using colors that pair very well together so I'm keeping kind of cool color range right now. If I wanted to go into bright yellows and oranges I would need to either use a new cup or wash this cup one or the other. And I am still using the iridescent medium and the clear gesso. And what the reason I'm using a lot of mediums is because I want this paint to have a translucency so that even though it's really thick, even though it'll be really thick, uh, thicker than a quarter, maybe two quarters stacked in how thick this paint skin will be, I want you to be able to kind of see through it whenever the light passes through it. And I just uh, had some fun. What I did is I splattered this color onto those colors and they will dry that way. Feel free to mix colors. As you can see in that one, I have a little bit of green, uh, seafoam green and bright yellow. Don't limit yourself to the colors that you have in your containers. Part of the beauty of making a painting is being creative with your own colors. Ooh, splattered up. Here we go, we have a bright, color there. And if uh, every now and then, if I want some especially translucent uh, colors, I want them to be like thin glazes or like the, the gel you would have over a spotlight that just kind of changes the color but you can still see through it. I'm just going to use pure medium and I'm not going to add any paint to the cup. Just pure medium and a little water to make it more fluid. And these, whenever these dry, they're going to be more transparent assuming you're using a clear medium. So now as you can see I have some colors there poured out and uh, I'm going to start making some neutrals that way these bright colors have something to pop on top of so now I'm just making kind of a white uh, making sure that it's a very fluid consistency. If it's too thick, it's not going to pour and spread. It's going to pour difficult, uh, very difficultly, if that's even a word. Uh, and then it won't work as well. It'll kind of be a waste of product. Let's see, here's I'm even thinking that whenever I whenever I peel these things up and they're thick pieces of acrylic paint, then I might even consider slicing them and then laying them down like a chevron pattern or some sort of cool uh, pattern. Let's see. Again, we have our paint skins made progress with that. Now so far, so far I have some blues, some teals, some soft and bright greens, a yellow, yellow green, dark blue, even a purple, and then some whites. Well, this one has some residue of purple, so it's a little bit of purple, but it's 98% white. And this is just white. Now, all of these colors, if you think about the lesson last week on uh, how color works and how to use color effectively and how to make bright colors like these really pop, uh, the thing that we need now are to pour some paint skins that are muted colors. So if you'll remember, let's say I want to start with something like this, but I want to mute it. So I need to start with some anthraquinone blue into my 
medium mixture with water. Put some drops of that. The more paint I put in there, the darker it will be. Now, what is the complement of blue? It is orange. So I'm going to take some diary light yellow, which is essentially yellow orange, and mix a little bit of that in. And then as I stir these, they should create a very kind of gross looking muddy blue because I used more blue than, than um, orange. If I used more orange than blue, then it would be a very muddy uh, bluish toned orange. All right, so there we have it. It's kind of a muted. bluish gray. Now whenever I make, I'm going to fill this side with muted colors and whenever these colors sit on top of these, those will really pop. So I'm going to pause it now and then I will bring you back as soon as I have some more combinations. So what I'm going to be doing is, is I'm going to be mixing a little violet with a little yellow. I'm going to be mixing green with a little red. I'm going to be mixing blues with a little orange, just like this, so that I can make a palette of muted, toned down colors. So as you see here, we have a number of colors, and these will all, all of these will dry into hard, flexible uh, pieces of colored acrylic, which is basically like plastic. And uh, next week, I'm going to take all of these and turn them into a work of abstract art, and turn them into an abstract work of art. Uh, so stay tuned, and I, if you have any questions, feel free to make comments on the blog if you need any clarification on how to make paint skins. Uh, there are countless ways to do it. Um, but definitely, if you want to do it the easiest and most effective way, you want some golden brand pouring medium, or uh, anything that is very fluid like that, but still has enough body so that it won't just spread everywhere. All right, thank you very much, and I will see you next week, and we'll take these and make them into a work of art.